Good. Hit you in the hit you in the wet spot. It's live. It's all you. Go. <laughs> hey guys, uh, this is Aaron or with RC Carcast uh, here again for episode six. Uh, with me, as always, my co-hosts are uh, Josh Steedy. How's it going, guys? Howard Raby. How you guys doing? And this week as a special guest, uh, we have Doug Welker, uh, columnist for Big Squid RC. How's it going, Doug? How's it going, guys? Going really well. good. <clears throat> All right, so kind of what we do whenever we have someone on is uh, kind of give us the quick and dirty uh, life story and tell us about uh, your early RC, how you got into it, uh, what you're into these days, and, uh, you know, just whatever. Whatever you want to tell us. Yeah, it's uh, it kind of funny. I started, I guess, in the uh, uh, early 90s, or actually mid-90s, I guess, um, with a Traxxas Hawk II, and I wound up racing. There was a little hobby shop down the street, and it was in a uh, like a kid's league, basically, that they had. And I wound up racing that for a few years. Um, I wound up with a Stampede when they came out, like when they were brand new. And then... Uh, Really, I got out of it for you know a long time until I got back into it um, uh, recently, about three years ago. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's not happy. Yeah, tell you what, hold that thought. <laughs> um, we're gonna have a round two of this. Yeah, I, I apologize. No, uh, be right. no problem, Doug. Yeah, do what you need to do, man. We'll just kick over to some news and stuff. We were talking about that anyway. Um, yeah. Well, that was Doug, the old time. Yeah. That was the How old time, wasn't it? Yeah. How old did Doug, he said is he got a six month old and a two year old? Yeah. So that, I can imagine. Yeah, I can a full yeah. handful. Um. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's just just jump over to news since we were talking about that stuff anyway. Right. Um. Um. There's a bunch of stuff. This week. Yeah, the, the big one though. I mean, the one that at least caught me off guard was the uh, the uh, Horizon. I don't know if you call it a debacle, a sellout. I don't know, a rescue. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess if uh, it sounds like you know, I didn't hear much about it until you guys had mentioned something. But it sounds like they got bought out by an investment group to uh, help save some financial hard times. So well, yeah, there's a dealer. two companies in Illinois. There's two companies in Illinois that I guess were investors to begin with that supposedly are now owners or a bigger part of what they were. They say everything's supposed to continue on seamlessly, but uh, we'll find out. I'll update anybody want to get information on it. So, yeah, I mean, uh, if anyone doesn't remember, Howard, you're a, a Horizon dealer currently, right? Yes. So, yes, that's, uh, so you, got a, you got an email explaining that things aren't supposed to change and things like that. Yeah, it, it made it sound like it's going to stay the same, but, but we'll all see. I know in the past they just kind of keep it more and more difficult for people to become dealers and stay dealers. So it kind of seems like they kind of try to shoot themselves in the foot every chance they can. <laughs> it's it's really yeah. I mean, investment firms aren't you know if they're bleeding money that bad to where they're going to go in bankruptcy. Investment firms aren't in losing money, so you know you wonder how long things won't change. Obviously, they would go in there to change it to try and make it profitable. So, so yeah, I mean, strange. To me. I mean, they could probably come in and just make some changes right away with you know, like uh, getting rid of Spectrum, uh, little things like that. But oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it's much better for your top. Huh? <laughs> what? I, I, at least, at least most people can afford the spe the Spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they don't make ouch. a different receiver for every radio. <laughs> Whatever. All speaking right, we'll, of uh, radios and receivers, speaking of radios and receivers, the uh, Kyosho i receiver. You see this thing? Smartphone, tablet, controlled type deal. Six channels. Um, can ad also add a camera to it. It's supposed. They were calling it a LAN system. So. Um, and I mean, what do you use it? What do you use it for? They said that as on their advertising. To replace any Futaba. What? <laughs> what was that? 
Uh, <laughs> Howard uh, dropped my Barista. <laughs> I dropped my Futaba. <laughs> the, uh, they're saying it's for cars, trucks, boats, planes, helicopters. And I just want to see anybody take their plane up and can fly it around with their iPhone like that. I'm, I'm interested to see that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I'll fly your quadcopter with it. <laughs> yeah, you won't. You couldn't fly it any worse. Well, you can't fly it, period. It's, oh, good point. We'll take off. Still broke. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I returned. Sorry. Apologize. Hey, <clears throat> you locked the kid in the basement? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Duct tape. <laughs> um, the right uh, outside. I, and now, this isn't really like industry news or anything like that, but something that I'd seen flying around Facebook a little bit on your guys' drift stuff. Um, some guy built a, a stainless steel uh, a tube for the better tube chassis drifter. Do you see that thing? It's a little truck. It's kind of it's made to look like that engineered to, engineered to drift full size truck. That's that impressive. Cool. It is. It is very. It was very cool. It uh, it got me thinking. I'm just wondering about drifting a 10 pound drift car. I mean, you know, you're already very low traction if you if you quadruple the weight of one of those things. You know. <laughs> what it'll be like? Yeah, I have no idea. Hey, watch your ankles. <laughs> <laughs> He'll just smash any other car out on the track. Hmm. Yeah, I think that would uh, that would that make sound crazy. Crazy. That might be the idea. Yeah, that's. I don't. I don't know. But that, I thought I just saw that thing floating around. The I shared it on my page. Uh, I'm sure we can share it on the RC Carcast page too. If anyone hasn't seen it. Yeah, I think I saw it on your page actually. Yeah, I mean it was a, it was it was an impressive, impressive deal. So, but yeah, I'd I'll, I'll be interested to see what you can do with a welder and something like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I need I would need like a uh, a shaft driven car as a base. Is there any decent shaft drive drifters out there? Yeah, there's quite a well. Yeah, I mean you could convert like a touring car or something. Can associated. Can and you can do all the different gearing and things like that with them? Mm, no. <laughs> Not really. Yokomo, I think. The way uh, his truck... Some options. The way his truck was built was a front motor, kind of shaft-driven. Right. So, I, uh, I don't know. It looked like something. It looked like something cool. It'd be kind of fun to try and find a base truck to work off of and just build something off of that. All right, enough of that. What's jumping me off the page here is in bold. What is a YRS Roadster from Yokomo? It, it's a. Uh, have you seen those like the Catrums, the Catrum Sevens? Uh, mm. They're like a. It's a little uh, rear wheel drive, direct drive. Uh, I just the reason it's in bold is because I copied and pasted it from a. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> he was I'm yelling like, this must be awesome. Said. It's in bold. Yeah. <laughs> um, it uh, it's just this little cool kind of looking rear wheel drive. I don't know what the hell the point of it is, but it looks fun. <laughs> and uh, it's got it's got like kind of that Catrum Seven looking body on it. Um, I think it's rear wheel drive only. Uh, beyond that, it's just I don't know, just looked fun. I saw so that it was playing ping pong. <laughs> now it's a plastic <laughs> bottle popping. Okay. Like a water bottle for some reason. <laughs> <clears throat> I want to get. I want to hear Doug's take on the on the Horizon story. We we touched on it a little bit before uh, we started recording, but uh, what what's your your feeling on the whole Horizon sellout? Yeah, I had um, all I had heard on it was basically they were they were going to be trying to avoid bankruptcy, and they were, you know, that was what happened was the CEO, I guess, uh, just led an investment group to take it over. So. <laughs> That's all I heard on it. So it's kind of an internal takeover. I guess. I, yeah. I mean, I don't really know much on it. I just asked some friends about it whenever I heard about it. Cause it's a, I mean, a pretty big story, I guess, you know. <laughs> One of the big players getting bought. Um, but, yeah, it seems like I know from what they're saying, it's just a, it's an internal thing. It, so they say nothing's going to change. So. That's what they always say before they start laying people off. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's gonna change. Don't jump ship. Wait till we fire you. Yeah. I did uh, uh, did you guys see the new Rice and Cane tires from RC Four Wheel Drive? 
Uh, are those the uh, the mud tires? Yeah, the mud bashers. Those things look those things look wicked. Yeah, they, I can't uh, wait. They they made me think about building like a, one of those little uh, mega mud trucks. That's what I've, I'm converting an SCX into. It. I've got a set of them on the way already. Yeah, that's that's what the same route I was thinking. Just some sort of big power uh, SCX10 raised up subframe, build a subframe under it, whole mm-hmm. deal. I think those things look like those things look pretty crazy. I wonder. I'm sure they'll need quite a bit of foam in them, but uh, well, they say they that they're the hard. They're supposed to be the hard compound, and they're supposed to have really stiff foams. So it's the same compound that pulling tires are made out of, and I know that those are super hard. So yeah. You actually shouldn't have to stiffen them up much. That's they're basically made for that, for a heavy truck to you know in big power. Right. Yeah, that, I think those will be uh, those will be fun. Those were pretty pretty impressive looking. Yeah, I can't wait to get them. I wish they were a little taller though. I don't know if you guys saw the dimensions. Yeah. On them. Four and a half inches, about four four yeah. six. Yeah. I think five. I think they were four or five or four. They're right at four or five, which yeah, is. Right uh, mm mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I figured you'd have to use an SCX ten. And keep it with a smaller body uh, to make it look the right proportions. Just because those tires that they run are usually so large. Oh yeah, yeah. No, they. Uh, I, I actually I know some guys with with some mega trucks, and uh, they're all over the place, man. Some of them they have like bobcat size tires, and then you go up to the you know crazy tractor tires, like you'd find on the rear of a John Deere. So <laughs> I guess at least you can. If you got a bigger body, you could, there are trucks that look like it. You can find them of every size out there, but I'm sure they're going to have a two-two of it. I mean, that tire seems like it was made for a two-two. Yeah, that's you know, I think that would have been a, an, you know, a good choice as well. But I do think that uh, I think that you'll be able to to do something pretty nice with that one nine. I do, I do think it'll be all about picking the right body for it, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got my. But my plan right now, I've got my HPI 79 Ford body. I had it on a pull truck, but the pull truck was basically parted out. So I just got a body sitting around. So hopefully it should work for it. I need to change a wheelbase. With the, I, it's going on a honcho. I need to change a wheelbase back to Dingo. I actually like the shorter wheelbase on those trucks, the, the body choices. Yeah, that would probably make sense. I mean, although those sometimes they do stick those axles quite a ways out there. Mm-hmm. In comparison to the bodies. On yeah. But yeah, I think I was thinking the same thing. I thought that looked like a lot of fun. Could be an interesting project. Yeah, I'm gonna. I hope to project. to do a write up about them here when, whenever I get them in. Whenever that's gonna be. Speaking of a write up, we didn't really get to it. You should uh, tell us a little bit about uh, well yourself, and we know you have kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I uh, a couple of years ago I, I mentioned I was into RC you know whenever I was younger, uh, and about really ten years ago I got out of it. Well, I finally got back into it about I guess three years ago, and um, actually not I guess longer than that. I got into it with a slash when the slash was released. You know I thought they looked really cool, a trophy truck, and uh, I wound up racing for you know I don't know about a year, um, hard and heavy, and I wound up burning myself out real fast when I just. I just couldn't get along with the racers. Not not like I'm arguing or anything at the track, but you guys know how it is. I mean, I've heard you. I know you guys share some of the same opinions. It's just uh, they suck the fun out of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, I got out of the hobby again, and then um, Aaron and I wound up meeting you around this time um, through a forum. And when I got my first SCX10, when I saw that truck, you know, I'd never even been into crawlers, and I wound up. Um, I bought that first SCX10. And I, there was no one around us to do it here in St. Louis. There was, I guess, you know, a comp scene that was dying, uh, you know, but nobody was running scale trucks. So I decided I'll start a Facebook page and um, the website, really, and it's just taken off from there. And now, you know, our trail runs, we got a ton of trucks on it. So, um, and uh, to, to go back to the article thing you were talking about, or the write up, Big Squid RC, I wound up hooking up with them at one of our top truck challenges last year. They came out to cover the event, and I met. Tim Moore, who's uh, one of the editors there, and uh, it, it wound up that you know they needed a scale guy, and I said, yeah, sure, I, you know, I, I sent him a test article, and it wound up I'm the scale guy for him. So, well, that's uh, you know, kind of an, an interesting deal, and the Big Squid is obviously their good size, a uh, good size uh, website. You know, they get a lot of traffic, yeah. and they, you know. Probably a good opportunity to get a lot of you know look at some of that new the new stuff and things like that, which is always uh, always fun yeah. to get your foot in the door with. 
the uh, the thing with Big Squid, I guess, interesting is they're a big basher site, so they're not um, they're not geared towards like the racer or the scale guy or anything. They wanted a scale guy because you know scale's so hot right now, and um, so it's weird writing the articles. I have to kind of I'm not writing them for one of us. You know what I mean? Like guys, who, we're all into it pretty heavy. I'm supposed to, you know, I, I try and tailor it to guys who, you know, a kid who's got a tracks to slash or something, who, you know, they, they don't know anything about scale and trying to bring, I guess, just some awareness of the scene. Yeah, I think that's that's the case with a lot of those type of uh, a blog type site rather than yeah. something that's, uh, you know, a forum where it's very interactive and a lot of tech and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I saw that with the, uh, when Axial put out the Exoterra, that's kind of like the, uh, the crossover vehicle, like uh, you saw, you saw a lot of go fast sites like RC Live and things like that doing reviews and stuff on that. Um, I think that was a, a attempt by Axial to try and bring some of that crowd over a little bit. Yeah, actually, that's the only Axial truck I've never driven. Is an XL. Uh, you can drive Josh. Well, you can kind of scoot. You can kind of <laughs> scoot it on the ground, actually. <laughs> I have one that rolls. <laughs> I've got half of one behind me. Different one. Different. Yeah, different don't, don't be trying to give that away. Less fire <laughs> damage. No. Oh, yeah. Um. <laughs> so, um, did when so a lot of us met you like I met you face to face uh, when you know a bunch of us Kansas City guys went to St. Louis for the mm -hmm. G6 last summer. Um, did you guys? How I mean, how did that come about? Did Parker? I mean, I guess Parker's from that area, so was it his idea to set up an event there? Or, or I know you guys co-hosted it, so how did that well, all come about? Uh, one of the guys in our club, actually, um, Mike Ewens is his name. He, you know, I don't know. He he basically kept hounding G6. <laughs> you know, he kept posting, bring it to St. Louis, bring it to St. Louis, bring it to St. Louis, and they brought it to St. Louis, so. Yeah, everybody, you can thank Mike for that. Now, Parker is from St. Louis, so I, you know, and so is Pitbull Tire, so I don't know what they had, you know, planned on it before, but I know in talking to Parker, Mike was showing him how many people we were getting at these top truck events, you know, and I, um, we, we talked off air about it, and we can talk about it a little later, but we had, um, we had two top truck events last year, and first was an experiment. It was about, like, 30 degrees and slating out, we wound up with 50 trucks out. And the wow. second one is the one that Big Squid came to. Um, we had like like 70 or 80 trucks show up for it, and it, then it was like 90, you know, 90 degrees and scorching hot, and we had all these trucks out. So um, Mike kept on posting <laughs> to Parker, "Look at all the trucks that we have here. We won a G6." <laughs> and uh, yeah, so thank you, Mike, for helping out with that. But yeah, the uh, I, you know the top truck thing. Me and you were talking about it last night, Doug. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Aaron was still. Uh, talking with us or not, and I know Howard wasn't there, but um, Thanks, you said, when is it happening? Yeah, 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 about that. <laughs> um, when are you having it in January, Doug? January 5th, we're going to have it in Winsfield, Missouri. Um, right. And we, we have all the information on uh, the, the, so I run the club Show Me Scalers, I guess. I don't think I mentioned that. Um, if you go to www.showmescalers.com. I have all the, you know, the rules and info there. The, uh, the rules are pretty simple, though. We, you know, I wanted to get away from, you know how uh, at some comps you've got all the scale guys, you know, loaded down with 700 scale items, you know, and it's the complicated scoring and everything. I Mainly, I guess, because I'm too lazy to do all that, you know, teching at the event. I just want to go out and play. Um, and we just run a really simple simple set of rules for it. I think you need uh, – I don't have the rule sheet in front of me, but I know you need either a hard body or a spare tire, a functional spare on the rear or five scale items, and you're good to go. Just one of those three, and then you're ready to rock. And we just do a one nine and a two two class. And what uh, what type of events uh, does it consist of? We're this one. Um, so we built a track in Winsfield, Missouri. Actually, my brother on his land did. Um, it's part of it's indoor. We're going to do a, uh, a time rock crawling event. We have uh, an indoor truck and tractor pulling track, so we're going to be doing a sled pull uh, with one of our sleds. We're going to be doing a mud pit. We have a Dennis Anderson style, uh, for those familiar, you know, with mega trucks. Um, the crazy mud pit, four lanes. Uh, two of them are speed pits, and two of them have obstacles in them. So it's, you know, it's kind of a roundy round mud pit. And then we have a big, um, it's kind of like a Monster Jam style obstacle course. 
with two lanes, a red and a blue, and the, the drivers are basically racing each other um, with two laps around a course. And it's all kind of like teeter-totters, crazy fence obstacles. Um, but we have a bunch of foam. You know that the, the, the spray foam? Winds up looking like poop, basically, <laughs> you know, like dog poop, that type of stuff. But we have a, a bunch of that stuff set up. So we have four of those obstacles, and we're doing, you know, take your score from each one and just we're putting them together. So this will be the first one we've done as a true, I guess, top truck challenge because in the past we just kind of ran separate events, you know, just gave results for them. We're tallying them up this time. So it should that, be fun. Uh, you know, that's not too bad of a drive for us. I was going to see if Howard and Aaron wanted to – Head over. Sounds good to me. I know it's not snowing. W- Winsville's cl- uh, no. but Do you guys know where Winsville's at in relation? I mean, it's about 50 miles west of 70, and it's where a stone's throw away from, from 70. So it's you know it's not like Bloomsdale, Missouri, <laughs> for where the G6 was. You know, right. basically an hour south of St. Louis. It, that'd knock about, seriously, about two hours off your drive. But, yeah. yeah. It's, it's ha- about halfway between Columbia and <clears throat> St. Louis, right? Yeah, yeah. We're, it's about an hour and a half from Columbia. Gotcha. So I think it could be it could be a lot of fun. You know, we uh, take a Wraith and a one nine over. I think you'd be in good shape. I'll take one of Josh's trucks. I don't want to get any of mine muddy. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah. So the mud is the funniest thing, man. We I've you know people message me. It's so funny they'll they'll message me like, hey. You know, I want to come, but I don't want to get my truck muddy. Is it going to be okay? And it's like, well, no, I'm going to no. throw your truck in the mud. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Nope, if you come, I'm going to douse it with mud. You said, don't come. Uh, I, will have, fu- I will have two trucks for sale mid-January. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, with the mud, we, we ran one event last year with the mud because the first one, it was like I said, it was like 30 degrees, and we had a mud pit dug out, and it, it froze. So so we had no mud. But the second one, when it was hot, um, a lot of people said they weren't going to do the mud, and every truck went through the mud before it was done. I mean, guys with high-dollar Tekken systems, um, the mud was by far the, you know, the best part. We had obstacles in it, in, in the mud. So if you just gassed it you know, and used your power, you'd fly out of the pit and get a DQ. So you had to kind of finesse it, and it was a blast, man. Trucks were skimming on top of the mud. There were the guys, you know, on the one nines actually bogging. It was a lot of fun. So hopefully we're trying to take what we did last year. And there's pictures on showmescalers.com and some video of it. Um, and then push it, I guess, you know, to the extreme of it. But the mud won't be that deep, so you don't got to worry about, you know, waterproofing, I guess, everything. Well, that's better news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just don't break down. Just get a waterproof under the windshield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, well, Doug, you had uh, you had said you had a handful of projects over there last night. We should. Uh, I want to see some of those again. The, the tractor is the one that I you had pulled out. That uh, I want to see that thing. Yeah. Let me uh, tell you what. I'll, I'll go grab uh, a few of the trucks here. So I got them right next to me. Hang on a second. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> Very <laughs> so, so I guess we'll take this JK moment JK. to uh, tell people that uh, we <clears throat> I had I had a guy to say or a guy today complaining that we didn't listen to comments. So we're trying to we're trying to incorporate comments into the show. Um, there's delay issues with Facebook and whatnot, but feel free to post comments or questions on Facebook. Um, Twitter would also be good. Uh, uh, it's at uh, RC Carcast on Twitter. Um, those would be better because I think Twitter responds a little bit faster. But, and we'll try to get to any of those on the show if anyone wants to interact. So, so this, is, uh, this is my pulling tractor that I've got here. Let me try and pan it back here. Uh, it's a scale Ford 9600 Pro Stock tractor like you see at the fairgrounds. Um, pull the top off of it here. It's got a, let's see there, Cats Sounds Mamba like- Max. Sounds like wood. Is it made of wood? Yeah, it is. It's yeah, it's, it's balsa wood. Um, the b- whole body is. Wow. And, uh, I've got a friend down in Columbia. Let me show you another one of the chassis I got here. Um, his name is Travis Sutton. He runs Sutton Motorsports out of Columbia, Missouri. He basically he's uh, he's big into building trucks and tractors for pullers across the country now. And uh, that tractor was completely built by him, pretty much. I added the electronics and graphics, everything else he hand, you know. He cut the chassis, um, assembled everything. 
those tires are actually cut and shut clod tires. They're narrowed, so are the wheels. And uh, he, uh, he built the whole balsa body as well. I guess this here. you don't have to worry about uh, tearing it up with a tractor puller so much. <laughs> well, it depends. Um, if On the side of the course, that they get a little crazy. Like I said, the, the big thing, you want to get your weight right. The front end, you know, will go up in the air. And unlike a real tractor, you can't steer it with brakes. That's how they steer. So you have to get your weight and get off the throttle if so. But they can flip over and do all kinds of other stuff because they're running, you know, most of the, like the super stock tractors, unlimited motor and battery. So you could be having, you know, a crazy 7900 system on six cell. <laughs> and, you know, crazy stuff can happen then. <laughs> and it could screw your tractor up pretty quick. Um, this is my two-wheel drive chassis right now. Um, Eight pound super modified two wheel drive. Um, I'm building that right now. Travis hooked me up with that. Are those uh, uh, were those TLT tires? Yeah, they're TLT tires. Uh, well, actually, I'm sorry. On the two wheel drives, those are midnight pumpkin tires. Um, and we cut them, we sharpen them up, and uh, you know for better grip. And the trucks, the four x four modified trucks, they use TLT tires mainly. Um, and we sharpen those too. We take a Dremel and we you know you shave the tread so. Um, pulling, you want harder tires, you know, crawling and everything, you want your soft, but pulling, you want it rock hard, you know, because the trucks weigh so much. So I'm a little bit intrigued about the pulling thing. I mean, is full-size pulling really big around there? Why Why is it such a craze uh, there in St. Louis? Full-size pulling's been really big around here, really this whole area, um, and then up into Wisconsin, really everywhere around the Midwest here, it's big. Um Pulling was the first motorsport I got into, I guess, as a kid. I mean, I, my first memories are from the St. Louis Arena, you know, with Bigfoot um, in the arena and then truck and tractor pulling. So it's funny, I guess, we're obviously it's a niche, you know, it's a niche thing. And um, I built, you know, whenever I, I was in a hobby years ago, I built a pulling sled with my brother. And um, this was like, I don't know, when T-Maxes were popular, so I guess 02 you know, something around there, and we tried to get it to go, and it just wasn't popular, so, um, you know, we just shelved the sled, so we had this nice pulling sled, and uh, it just wasted away in storage, and it wound up, when I got back into the hobby, you know, scale trucks were huge, and people heard I had a sled, and they're like, dude, bring it out, you know, let's hook <laughs> the trucks up to it, so I'm like, okay, and um, we brought it out to a couple events, and guys were talking about wanting to build pullers. And then I found out about the uh, Mid-Missouri RC Truck and Tractor Pulling Association out of Columbia, Missouri. And, um, you know, they've got a whole bunch of purpose-built trucks. And then over here in Illinois, there's another club, the Central Illinois Pullers. And uh, so, you know, I kind of started our own sanctioning thing here. And I uh, we promoted our first pull in October, and we had about 70 vehicles, which wow. for a, as big of a niche, you know, I mean, these tractors are like, you know – I around eight hundred dollars probably six eight hundred dollars each one of them and they can only do one thing for about ten seconds so it's a niche <laughs> it's it's a big niche it's like the drag racing guys but most of us are hardcore into real pulling as well so it's yeah um, luckily with how big scale is it, it's just another offshoot man the popularity and I've got to get it going over here so we're about to start selling pulling sleds by the way if anyone out there's interested, Ooh, um, I think KCRC will definitely be interested. Yeah, you guys asked me. I remember uh, one time about doing it. We we built that first sled as a one-off, but enough guys have wanted it that you know we're like, okay, so we have the first prototype. We're calling them Happy Hooker pulling sleds. Nice. And, uh, yeah, they're um, we're actually going to debut it at our top truck challenge for the scale truck. So the sled is light enough. It it, it weighs only 11.5 pounds where the other one I have is about 22. So it's really hard on a truck to even get going. Uh, this mm -hmm. new sled, you can fly with it and all the weight, you know, it, it's a lot easier to pull, put it that way on the trucks. So, uh, even for scale trucks, that's a big thing. We were kind of building it, not just for tractor pullers, but for guys wanting to do top truck challenges. Cause you know, most of the guys with sleds are all these crazy home built ones. So right. yeah, trying to get it affordable and everything. Um, I'm actually building the website uh, right now, mmrctpa.com. I'm building oh, that for the... That gave me a headache already. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if my friend Travis is listening, I told him I should have just done suttonmotorsports.com. That would have been easier. But he's going to be selling... All... <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, we're going to be selling all our pulling products on that website, though, soon enough. So, yeah, just FYI, anybody, anybody wanting anything, um, he... 
he fabs them up and he sells some really nice stuff and it's very affordable too. The nice thing with pulling trucks, they're all, you know, most of them are I see. Yeah. I'll post it on our fa the Show Me Scalish Facebook page uh, or have it on showmescalish.com. <laughs> but yes, I'll, mmrctpa.com. It's Mid Missouri Tractor Pulling Asso RC Tractor Pulling Association. <laughs> hey, he just hired me, man. I'm not I'm not the one who who came up with the name. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, that's uh well, that'll be that'll be interesting, and I think you know, like KCRC, we would definitely we we've got a good scale scene around here, and I think just adding a adding some polling to it would you know at the regular events would be fun just for a bonus type deal. So um, yeah, we we got the prototype built, and we're looking to do a run of ten originally, and there's a bunch of guys who are wanting in on already. If we can sell them, I'll hook you guys up. Though I'll make sure you guys are are hooked up over there in KC. Well, that'd be cool. I don't know what. Uh, Could we get an angry hooker instead? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we uh, when I was younger, my dad and I we uh, rebuilt an old boat, and uh, he named it the Old Hooker. Okay. Had it had it on the side of the boat, and he didn't. You know, he didn't that was really nasty. Weird. My your mom jokes, but I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> yeah, he didn't care much what the neighbors thought. So you know. Uh, the funny thing with the pulling is, you know, a few guys show up. I mean, it's one of those things. It's like the drag racing guys. You either like drag racing or you don't. You know, you don't care. It's just kind of one of those things to where you either really think it's cool or you're like, what the hell are these guys doing? So I know we had a few guys show up and like, this is it. <laughs> you guys are just hooking. <laughs> they, if you don't understand the concept, I guess it's one of those things. If if you like tractor pulling, it's it's really cool. If you don't, it's the most you know stupidest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, like, like what are you uh, expecting? Like bikini models and fireworks and stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <clears throat> that's next year. Might have to get one of those tracks as Christmas trees and uh, two of the two of the sleds. Man, we do you guys know of anybody who's used those for mud racing? Because I have asked around. I've wanted to, and I've heard that um, I thought they'd be great for mud racing, but I've heard that they're kind of finicky. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I guess they're not made for that. They're made just for the drag cars, you know, and obviously not getting caked with stuff. But I guess that makes, that would make sense. The uh... build a sneeze guard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, that I mean, that uh, that mega truck stuff lately has has caught my interest quite a bit. I've I've never been a big fan of mud, but uh, mud racing is it, it does look kind of cool and. Um, you know, it's a blast. You'll you'll be in the mud if you come to the TTC, man. You'll you'll have a blast in the mud. And I hope to have my mega truck done by then, so I can have a an open challenge. Basically, we got a couple other guys that have some crazy Formula Off Road mud racers, and I'm laying down the gauntlet saying I'm building a truck that you will not beat. So <laughs> nice. Yeah. So I'm sure it'll grenade off the starting line, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Choose the way that works. Yeah. Formula Off Road. I think maybe it's broken. Broken Maybe drive have use for that big model. Yeah, there you go. Use your splash for something. <laughs> no, I got that so. 7700 Mamba and extra Wraith axles. Yeah, I'm going with a 6900. That's what I'm throwing in the uh, throwing in the mud truck. So I'm trying to bulletproof the drivetrain right now while I'm waiting on my tires to get in. Those uh, those tractor tires. The wheels I'm using are pretty cool too. I didn't even know the RC four wheel drive. They're called like Texas. Uh, Texas Specials or something. They basically are tractor wheels. <laughs> really? And they, yeah, they look just like, you know, um, the King Sling, if you guys are familiar with it. Dennis yeah. Anderson's mud truck. They're Those like that. Tractor wheels in there? Those oh, yeah. Those green foam things? The, yeah, the, on the King Sling? Yeah, they're uh, rice and canes. Huh. Interesting. What's up? Um, well, yeah, that, uh, I'm... I've been thinking about that quite a bit, and that might be a good uh, good excuse to build one. So. <laughs> yeah. Everybody gets angry at me over here that I keep coming up with different ideas, and their wives keep getting pissed at them because I keep, you know, <laughs> I want to do scale monster truck racing, scale pulling, uh, mud racing, the rock crawling stuff, the trail running, all this stuff. So everybody needs all these freaking trucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's... Uh, you can't hang out with Doug anymore. <laughs> yeah, one of their wives said that. Yeah, my friend, uh, one of my friends, is, he said that every time he hangs out with me, he comes home and he needs some other new toy. 
Yeah, I need an unlimited supply of SCX tens for the most part. I just yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, every time I start a new project, I get dirty looks. From, from, from who? I, I can imagine you make. From, I'm gonna say from, you're from her. No. <laughs> what you're talking about, Axel? Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. I'm, I'm sure they love you. Yeah. <laughs> so, speaking of projects and whatnot, uh, probably get into that part, Aaron. What are you, you uh you working over there? Or you just um just just drift, man. Just uh. Finished up the uh, the secure last weekend. Finished got the finished the body. Got it all detailed out. Um, pretty pretty stoked with the way that. Oh, here I'll do I'll do that. Here I got it right here. I'll be right back. <laughs> there I can do it. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but oh yeah, turned out pretty good. Uh, worked real hard, got it ready, and then turn on the lights. I don't have a battery in it. Sorry. <laughs> I I meant to ask you about that, Aaron. They're, because I know you're like the drift guy. I've actually, today I was looking at drift cars. There's a couple guys here that are wanting to get a drift thing in St. Louis going, I'd love to try it. I just, I don't know where to start. You know, I'm, a, I guess, more of the off-road guy. But what chassis are you using for that? That's the Secura D3, which... Oh, okay, okay, yeah. It's like the cheapest thing you can get. You can get into it for 100 bucks, which is a, a great way to do it. But the bad part is also probably the hardest thing to drive out of the box on the market there is, so... I think the general consensus is you start with a 50-50 car, you know, something. You can buy a purpose-built 50-50 car that'll be pretty friendly to drive. Mm -hmm. um, but I, if I, I'm, I'm looking at that, uh, the thing Eddie showed us, it was a Team Magic, uh, it was a belt-driven, purpose-built drift car, but it's 50-50 out of the box, I believe. So you could, you know, build it up, drive it, learn how to drift, and then if you want to get more advanced, you can convert it to counter-steer later, so... I don't really recommend the Secura for a first-time drift car driver, so I would look at that first. But or you could get a Secura, I guess, and convert it to 50/50, which is pretty much what Howard did, uh, and it drives pretty nice. So that's a pretty pretty cost-effective way to get into it, I guess. What's uh What's that Team Magic run? Yeah. They have an RTR uh, that's that's all plastic. Uh, it's around 180 bucks, ready to go, which is pretty awesome. Um, and then that pro one that Eddie showed us, I think that thing runs around 380 to 400 bucks. Dang. Yeah. Well, it's all CNC carbon fiber. It's it's pretty nice. Huh. That's what you have to have. It's interesting. Yeah, I don't need that. So yeah, maybe just get something cheap and you know see if the scene gets going and see if it's something you want to do and then maybe invest in something better. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm pretty dead set. I'm gonna try it now. I know. Uh, What's hang on here? One of my friends uh, messaged me earlier. What's a MS O one D? Uh, that sounds like it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, because I looked at them earlier, about three hundred bucks. I saw ready to run. Some cool looking bodies on them too. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting looking car. I've, I I admit I've tempted. I don't know why, because I have all this money invested in this one, but <laughs> I like the I like the looks of it a lot. I saw the belts, you know, and the pulleys underneath it. It looks insane. <laughs> well, it's just, I, I guess I'm, I don't know touring cars, so I had a vintage Trans Am. I raced for a little bit, you know, a few years ago, which that's a blast, by the way. I don't know if you guys. VTA stuff? Yeah. Well, before the, you know, the rules, the rule guys come in there and start, you know, jacking <laughs> around. You know, I, you know. That's, I just got that on uh, Xbox the other day. It's a uh, five or whatever. Which one is it? GTA? Oh. <laughs> not not as fun? VTA. V. Actually, I don't know GTA is more fun than the local carpet track around in St. Louis. Ouch. <laughs> not, not pulling any punches. I shouldn't say it. They were nice to me, but I, yeah, it's just, I, I walk in and there's, you know, I remember I tried it one night. I had a TC4. This was last year because the vintage Trans Am stuff just looks so cool, man. If you like muscle cars, mm -hmm. and it's very you know cheap to get in. And uh, I went in there, and there was, <laughs> I walked in, and there's a fight between the oval guys and the carpet guys. So I did a few laps, went home, and I sold the car. <laughs> I said this isn't for me, <laughs> and uh, I wound up getting another SCX10 with it. So that's always, every time I mess with something, I buy something, I jack around with it, and then I just sell it for another SCX10. So. <laughs> it seems to be how it works. Uh, oh yeah, I I have a sawback. I don't know if you guys 
Oh yeah, yeah. We'll talk I wanted about to ask that. you about that. Um, yeah, I really like it. I'm, you know, I, I kind of mentioned off the air. I I didn't know what to expect. Put that in a nice way, I guess. You know, it just I I didn't really know anything about it. It was weird that there was no information about that thing. I remember they announced it, and that was it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, it was a quick it was a quick uh, debut and release, which you know is you know, the opposite of what happens sometimes. But uh, mm-hmm. the uh, you know yeah it was quick, and you know the big thing is is that it is it's fairly scaled to you know most things. It's it is leaf sprung all the way around. And you were saying mm-hmm. how are you, how are you liking the performance? I I really like it, man. It's a blast to trail with. I um, one of my buddies, Mike, who was who went out with me to test it, you know, I, I did a write-up for Big Squid on it um, last week, actually, in my column on there, and, uh, but yeah, I, I was I was really impressed, man, it's a blast to drive, it's, as far as leaf trucks go, I mean, I it blows away anything I've seen, you know, because out on the trail, we've had guys with Tamiya's, the high lifts, man, just break down, it seems like, constantly, they look cool, but, um, and then the RC four-wheel drives, I've seen those go kaput, too, but the stuff, I mean, you know, I guess in a couple of months, ask me then. But I beat on it pretty well, and I, you know, I even said I, I hooked it up to the sled, and I gave it a few pulls. And normally, that's a test of a drivetrain right there. That's and right. I, it was fine. I mean, it, you know, it made a few passes with it just fine. So didn't twist anything, huh? No, it had one, some axle axle hop that looked cool. <laughs> but one but thing I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna bag you on a little bit, Doug. What's that? Your choice of scale figure. A Team Fortress guy? You know, people yeah, are busting my... No, I, now, I'll give you... I don't... Whoever he was, but a, a Willie's Jeep has a wheelbase of, like, 80 inches. Like, <laughs> that truck is, like, one-seventh scale if you scale it out. Yeah, I know. It's big, and the dude is small. <laughs> Your figure needs to be, like, <laughs> twice his size. But have you seen... It's like, it's like Vern Troyer driving or something. Yeah. Have you... Well... You know what makes it though? There's uh, another guy in RC Crawl where I got the idea. He he used another Team Fortress figure, the soldier character from the game, and um, th- my guy has a tiny head. That's why it looks so goofy. My figure's the head is tiny on it, so it's too late now. He's super glued in there until I get another body for it. But now, uh, it's at Crawl Palooza, this year, at Crawl Palooza this year, Jason, uh, one of the owners of RC Crawler, uh, he came down from Colorado. And he had a wraith with a figure in the driver's seat, but the figure was an actual midget, like an, an it was labeled <laughs> a midget. <laughs> it was a it's a like a WWE action figure who's a, a, mid, midget, a midget wrestler. He's so, a little person. Yeah, You're right. whatever. <laughs> whatever. Fine. Whatever. Little. <laughs> Have, um, Sorry, little have you guys seen, though, there's a few guys now I've seen the pictures they, they have. It looks like, I guess, a G.I. Joe doll or something in the sawback, and it looks way too big. It looks like, a, you know, freaking Andre the Giant is sitting in sitting in one. So it's weird. The scale of that truck is weird how, like you're saying, it's like a, a Wraith figure. Because I, when, when I had a Wraith, you know, I, I had a couple figures I messed with, and they all seemed to fit well. But that thing was kind of, it's a pain to, to find the right size for it. But it seems like RC four-wheel drive. I guess, I don't know, it's G-Mate, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a G-Mate truck. G-Mate, yeah. All right, forget my point's invalid. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, but, well, I, I do listen to a couple of, or, you know, uh, what's the guy, the Scale Freak guy. Uh, what's oh, yeah. That? What? Joe Ferguson. Joe Ferguson. Go for average Joe guy, and you know I listen to their. They've got a good little bench questions show, and that's fun to listen to in the background while I'm working and stuff. And you know they were commenting on they wish they wouldn't have put one nines on it because of the scale, and think you know saying they'd never put nineteens on. Well, it's, they're what they're missing is is I granted they are kind of newer to the scale scene um, as far as most things you know. It's but they don't realize that it's not you can't call everything a one tenth scale. So. If you actually look at how things scale out, that thing it scales out very. Lo- I mean, one nines almost come out small on that. If you they do, do the math mm-hmm. on it. it. It should, you know, a two point two wheel would actually be closer to the right scale for that truck. It's which is weird, but. Um, I have trepidors on it. I, I took the stockers off, and the trepidors look much better. I think, and they perform perform better. The stocker ones weren't bad, I guess, for what they were. They reminded me of the old flat irons. Um, before you know, the, before the really soft ones, 
Right. Um, so they weren't bad, but I had some trepidors laying around, and I wanted the better, you know, it'll look cooler and the ground clearance, so. So, um, you know, we had a, uh, there was a couple of questions that came in, actually, on uh, um, just some random stuff that uh, Chris had asked here. You know, you guys ever had any, in, uh, me and Howard, right. did, that, uh, right. launch together did that break up um, for I you? Can I can read that yeah. over, I I that, that actually kind of sticks <laughs> All right, start over. Read it from the beginning. <laughs> no, that was it. That was his question. No, uh, the uh, we had, Chris had post on there. You know, what do you guys think of ranchos? And I know me and Howard had built one uh, over a couple of nights, and uh, I think it kind of fits more in that mega mega truck style. You know, you can take one out and just bomb around with it. I love them. I wish Axia would just release one. The, I know because how'd you do the links? I know you got to bend the links weird, right? Well, me and Howard got a, around that a little differently. We just took and uh, threw a Wraith skid and Wraith links in it. Just cut the SCX10 oh. chassis a little bit, tapered the skid just a hair, and ran Wraith links all the way around and uh, made it. It made it easy. It, you know, it was a, a way easy way to get around things, and just made some custom cross braces. But um, took it out and beat on it a little bit, and it did real well. And then I uh, I sold it to a guy, uh, um, a DJ. It was his, his name anyway. He I st he still emails me back and forth Ready? about parts. And, no, not no. <laughs> it's <laughs> well, I'll leave it alone. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I think, the I think it makes it look kind of cool. cool. It's kind of like a Toyota with one-ton axles or three-quarter tons under them. Kind of. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it does. It fits that full width, you know, big, big truck style. It, you know, it they they definitely have a purpose. You know, it's not they're not a scale they're not a super scale truck, but uh, if you want a truck, you know, to go out there and kind of run hand in hand with a Wraith, great great little option. Mm -hmm. And I pick up I buy Wraith axles whenever I see them. For a reasonable price, I've got a pile of wraith axles, so it. Uh, I just I hoard them until I find something I need to use them for and throw them under that. And I'm a I'm a big fan of those axles, so I. There's, there's I think there's it'll be a December giveaway. It's going to be a set of wraith axles. <laughs> Ooh, good idea, Josh. We'll we'll need to talk I think soon off here because I I'm, I might be looking to actually throw some wraith axles in on the mega truck. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet for axles. I'm uh. Well, well, I guess if I use the rice and canes, it looks stupid with the wraith axles. I'd have to go with a bigger tire. We'd have to. I'd have to look at what the proportions of those things are, what the track width of those mega trucks actually running are. Um, they're all over the place. <laughs> right. Yeah. They're, yeah you'd really, some you'd of them have are, to look at that. But a four and a quarter inch, or four and a half inch tire on those, you know, on an eleven inch wide track width, it might look a little goofy. Yeah. Yeah, probably so. would. <laughs> So Howard, have you uh have you done anything lately? Just hmm, no, <laughs> no. Uh, went over to Aaron's, helped him a little bit on his drift car, did a little work on mine and Tyler's drift cars. That's about it. You fixed my truck? <clears throat> nope. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it on the other side of the garage. <laughs> All right, no hurry. Yeah, the, plan, the plan was to work on drift track last weekend, but damn it, it was cold, so we just stayed in the garage where it was warm. <laughs> <laughs> we just held Good each other. Plan. So uh, I have a question, I guess, in here. I think he's listening to, so my buddy Mike I talked about, he's, he's looking to get a bass truck. He's asking, I guess he's going to buy one here tomorrow or something. Should he get a Vitera, uh, the Helix or Helix or whatever those things, you know, the new, the new thing that's got like this traction control? Um, or a Savage Flux. He says, which one? Go. Oof. You know, I my only experience with those type of trucks at all is really the Savages, just because uh, when I was doing all that design work stuff for uh, TCS, TCS was big into doing Savage stuff, so I worked on a lot of those upgrade parts. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, like the fifth scale conversion and... Um, uh, things along those lines, but and beyond that, I've got my monster truck experience is nothing. <laughs> yeah, we need Eddie. Eddie, if you're listening, uh, chime yeah. in, buddy. <laughs> we had uh, 
one of the best, I guess, durability things I've ever seen was last year that we, so we, at the Bigfoot open house, they do the open house, um, every year, which like they'll bring in, uh, they do a couple car crushes, have a big truck show. They had our club there last year, just doing the RC demo. And one of our guys, he put a GoPro on a Savage XS. I think it's this, you know, the small one, like the mini. And, oh, yeah. uh, our friend Ed, he got too close to, to Bigfoot and Bigfoot oh. ran it. Yeah. Ran it over. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And and the cool thing about it, I think. Tell he, me there was video footage. Oh yeah, it's, <laughs> it's funny actually. The uh, he's I'll have to link you guys the uh, the footage of it because um, Bigfoot got it from the outside, you know, where you could see the truck cross in front, and then we had the GoPro footage also of the onboard, so it was funny. <laughs> but anyways, all it all it broke was I think he said like a ten dollar servo part, you know. Oh. I mean that's so I told Mike right there I was like hey. You know the Savage is tough. Like I know, I know the bigger one is actually. When I used to be in the those type monster trucks, I had a Savage. But Defterra does look cool. How it's got the uh, that traction control system on it, which you know, that's, that's, that's pretty uh, interesting. That that is interesting. And Vitera is a new company, and uh, you know I, I don't know how. The, obviously, they're low C back and all that kind of stuff. And I see Eric on here saying Savage flux easily on the comments. But uh, <laughs> the one thing is that I don't think there's anything that drives me more nuts than traction control. I hate traction control. It's like the worst thing ever. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's uh, just a <laughs> Yeah, I've got like um, I've got a Jeep JK and you almost you even if you turn it off, it's not off. And it's just it just pisses you off all the time. I just it seems like that just because it's a turd. There's that. Those things are gutless. I don't know how, how it works, so I'd assume you could maybe program it and turn it off. I really don't know. I mean, so it's a, it's electronic? I, yeah, I don't. The, the reason I know so much about it, the big squid guys are reviewing it, I know, right now, and I think this week they're um, they're going to try and put it up live. But I've heard that uh, it's something new, I guess, for RC. You don't really see many trucks, I guess, you know, with it now, so I'm not very familiar with it. But um, I know for durability, Mike, I, I'd say probably go with a Savage, though. I mean, there's, you know. Parts have been made for it forever. Also, and the things are beast. I didn't think it was traction yeah, control. HBI. I thought it was some some type of stability control. Or, okay. Yeah, stability control. I'm probably yeah, okay. saying it right. It's something like that, though. Yeah, when the car goes off track, it it counters to bring it on. Monster truck guys just losing their minds right you're, now. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, <laughs> we'll, 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 get, we'll, we'll get off that subject. Sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> and hey, we got a we got a question from Sam out there too. Go ahead, Josh. Uh. Let's see. Oh, what's Sam post? I didn't. Sorry, I didn't see that one. Uh, it's kind of a general question. It's not really on our subject here. It says, uh, "What was the biggest factor for you guys to get into RC and crawling, especially?" For me, the, the for biggest me, reason. Yeah, go for it. Here. Oh, I was just gonna say for me, um, it sounds weird, but the first thing I saw was the Venom Creeper, and uh, I, there was something about the body on the thing, and it had these kind of unique looking tires. I just I've told you how sometimes I get like an asphyxiation with like tires on these things or whatever, but I was just like I had to have a set, so I, I bought it, you know, impulse buy, <laughs> and I'm, I'm playing with it, and then let's, then you start to look around, and you're like, should I've gotten something better? I got it right here. I'm not gonna get it. Um, and then I was like, oh, I should have bought an axial. So got an yeah. got got an axial. Um, you know, drove around my neighborhood with my. A couple of my neighbors were into it, and then ran across KCRC, and the rest pretty much history with you guys. So, who's ever next? Yeah, the uh, Go ahead, Josh. You know, I uh, I got into it way back like 2004, and even <laughs> back then, the the thing that was my biggest draw was just the uh, the fabbing of parts and uh, just making something your own or making it look different or just you know, but. Right now, what keeps me in it most is is building, building stuff. When I was comp crawlers, I was, I you know my own chassis, uh, or wheels, or, and I, you know I worked for TCS crawlers for a long time designing parts, and I you know I designed the X Trail chassis, which was like a big scale chassis before the SEX10 was available. You designed yeah. that? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, our, uh, um, my friend Chris, I know, is listening now. He runs it on. The big orange truck, which is our club mascot, we always joke. Um, <laughs> that's an Axe 10 with with one of those chassis on. That's cool. Yeah, I never yeah. didn't know that. 
<laughs> you know, I did I did a ton of parts like that, and uh, that was around the times like the the TLT was big, and the Wheelie King, and the then the Axial, and um, that's when I was heaviest into design stuff, and that's really what got me started and got me uh, hooked up with you know all the people in the industry and things like that. So, um, and now it's just that again, I just like building, and I'm you know down in my shop now, and I'll probably be down here all night until it's too late, and I'm tired, and I'm gonna be tired tomorrow at work, and but uh, just building that's that's what keeps me there. I tell you what, um, Howard, you answer. I'll go grab what got me into the hobby. I got it out in the, out in the shop. I'll be right back, in. <laughs> All right. I'll be right back. All right. Yeah, I'm kind of – I'll be right back. I'm kind of like you, Josh. I mean, love being able to just kind of hands-on, kind of creative with stuff and kind of kind of build different things, change different things. Um, and the fact now that we can play with Barbie dolls and put them in my trucks and let them drive around, that's even better. <laughs> <laughs> Gives you a reason to get all your dolls back out. <laughs> yeah, Howard's gonna be like sewing little clothes and stuff. Yeah, you know? he's he's got all the the heads on the bar. Gonna be. Shape. I already have been. <laughs> Let me go get them. No. <laughs> no, you're up. All right. So I saw one of these kits. This is when I was a little kid. I saw it in a toy liquidators. Some, you know. Something you would not find, I guess, a uh, um, a hobby style kit, and I've always thought it was the best. An original Clodbuster. That's still my favorite RC RC truck of all time. It was the first kit I built. I had a Traxxas Hawk too as my first hobby style because it was ready to run, you know. And I, as a kid, I didn't know anything, but um, when I got more into it, I finally bought a Clodbuster as my first kit, and I built a few of them, and it's still my favorite to run. Um, like I was telling you, Josh, it's, they got no suspension on them. You know, they bounce over everything. Uh, but I love them. <laughs> yeah, basically. But they're like an old, you know, I like I said, it goes back to the old, like, in the arena. You know, I grew up on classic monster trucking, you know, where you just hit a wall of cars, and that was it. And they're great for that. <laughs> Something, uh, yeah, kind of getting off, a little bit off subject of back. You didn't mention that you, uh, where you worked but previously. Yeah, I... Uh, I wound up, it's a funny story of that too. Um, I spent about seven years working for Bigfoot here in St. Louis. Um, I worked there two times. I worked there, um, the funny thing is I heard one day that, you know, they were, I saw they posted on the website, you know, I was, I think I was 19, and uh, they said they were looking for a driver, you know, and I figured, oh, I'd love to drive a monster truck. So I remember I went in there and I applied for a driver position in there. You know, they're like, well, do you have a commercial driver's license? Do you have any experience? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I was like, no, I don't have anything. They go, well, driving a clodbuster. <laughs> yeah, hey, that actually helped me. That actually helped me. Um, they're like, well, you know, we, you know, we can't hire you for the shop, but we have position up here um, in the, like, they have their gift area slash showroom, you know, with truck parts and everything else. And um, yeah, it turned out, you know, a lot of the guys, clodbusters are popular up there, so that was kind of my in. And um, yeah, I worked there once, and then I worked again as their webmaster. I came back after graduating school. So, yeah, I've been around. I, I, you know, I still work on their website and do some stuff with them. So I'm all, I'm fairly close to Bigfoot still. So yeah, I've always been into full scale monster trucks. I mean, that's kind of been my. Have you ever gotten to drive one? Yes, I have actually. That is like uh, bucket list right there. You can yeah. check that right <laughs> off. The the funny thing with that is, uh, I drove uh, Bigfoot one, the original truck. Wow. And uh, I do what? Sorry, the, the enormous one? No, big. No, that's Bigfoot Five. I've been up in that thing when it's running, but I never. No, I haven't <laughs> driven that one. And that was once. Uh, but no, Bigfoot One is the original truck. They should make it run uh, the wheels of that one. Yeah, <laughs> I would turn yeah. into a child around that thing because I can remember just being infatuated with that thing as a kid. So I would just completely revert back to being, you know, well, five <laughs> years old around that you know, thing. <laughs> The funny thing is whenever they, you know, they're like, all right, Doug, you're going to learn how to drive this thing. And, um, you know, it's like, all right, awesome. And Jim Cramer, who, I don't, Jim Cramer's like the Dale Earnhardt of monster trucks, you know. He was the first professional monster truck driver, and um, he's the one who gave me my lessons. And, of course, you know, because I'm the, I always laugh, I'm the web guy. They don't, you know, you don't want him around the shop or anything like that. Just watch out. They always give me crap when I'm back there because I'm the computer guy. And uh, the whole shop stops what they're doing. And comes out to watch my lesson. It's like, oh god! So the first thing I do is kill it. 
because you know it's got a big. Uh, it's just you know I was nervous. You know, you fire it up for the first time, and it's like you know, holy cow. <laughs> And uh, Jim Cramer's barking order, so yeah, I kill the engine because you know it's it's not fuel injected, and um, I you know I was too I wasn't on the throttle hard enough. And uh, Bigfoot one's a two-speed transmission, so whoop. <laughs> We're Anyways, keep going. Keep going. Uh, I want to burp in the throttle on it, and Cramer, Jim Cramer, yells at me. He's like, "Damn it, give it some gas!" And uh, he yelled at me, so I stopped on the gas, and he threw it back into second gear. Man, I mean. That's when I started learning how to drive, I guess, the truck. It was a blast. You know, after that, just hot run around the parking lot with it. Uh, the four-wheel steer on that truck really screws with you, though. Like, I guess on the, the modern race trucks, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar. The monster truck, you know, has four-wheel steering. And right. um, the rear is a toggle switch. It, You know, it's a hydraulically driven toggle switch. So normally when you're driving like a car, if, you know, you turn the steering wheel left, the vehicle goes left. If you turn the toggle or hit the toggle switch left, that really the wheels turn the opposite way, but so your brain doesn't screw up. You know, if you want to go left, that's the way it'll turn the truck. Right. Bigfoot one, and, and they self-center. Then the, you know the modern one self-center, so you let go of the switch and it self-centers. Bigfoot one is old school. You have to turn the other way to you know to turn the other way. So it, it's screwing with your mind. You know, Jim's yelling at me on what to do on how to drive it. The truck is just crab walking, you know, sideways down the parking lot because both wheels are turned opposite ways. And uh, it doesn't self steer, so you got to look out. You know, you got to look out the back window. You're hanging out. You know, <laughs> it's it was a lot of fun though. I'm glad to. You know, that's what everybody asked when I heard it work for Bigfoot. You drive one? So, yeah. So you didn't flat like an entire parking lot full of cars with it? <laughs> no, no. Damn. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder what the insurance rates are over there. They're like they have a special rate for car crushes. You know, if a truck drives over somebody's car. <laughs> you know, the funniest thing there is. Um, it, whenever they're doing testing there, it's really safe. You know, they have a remote in, uh, ignition interrupter, the RAI out there, you know, so it'll, you know, if a car would pull in the lot or something, they would kill the truck. And we normally, you have people section off the parking lot so someone doesn't fly in there. But the thing that causes the, the issue is Bigfoot's right next to the highway. I have seen cars slam on their brakes <laughs> um, when they're going on the off ramp, you know. I mean, it's dangerous. People just pull over. They have no, you know, they see a monster truck, and they're like, whoa. And whoa. they, you know, all these people stop, and it's, you know, they're super loud. So that's, yeah, that's more danger has come from the highway from rubberneckers than, than actually, <laughs> you know, a truck hitting somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> guys, I'll be right back. Just give me a... <laughs> What are you going to cool. get? That's... Yeah, so... Um, a lot of guys over there in the RC stuff, though. Oh, know, I bet it's, it's big over there too. So, yeah, I remember when you were story. when you were talking about that. I wish we could have made it out there, but yeah, just well, we'll be doing it again this year. Oh, um, really? Yeah, we're actually this year we're going to be doing a clod bust. Well, a scale monster truck race, I guess. We're going to have um, a big figure eight course set up, um, like a classic, you know, classic track with a big set of cars in the middle, and uh, we're going to race heads up for it. We're going to race retro. Which is an old style, like Cloudbuster style, you know, 20 turn motor limit. Um, keep it slow because the trucks are all bouncy. And then we're gonna do a uh, a race class. So you know, with the modern four link Cloudbusters, TXT ones, all the aftermarket chassis. So yeah, we're gonna do that at the open house and then a demo also. You know, just scale trucks and everybody else just just hanging out with it. But um, I can't wait for that. Sounds like fun. I, yeah. I don't know when the date is yet because Bigfoot doesn't announce it till. They do it sometime at the beginning of summer. Basically, got to play with the dates because while well, the trucks aren't booked, they wait for a date that's slow. You know, when they have all the trucks there, right? And they'll announce it. So, yeah, um, you guys should, you know, I keep asking you guys to head down here. <laughs> I feel bad because we, I need to get up to KC sometime. Open up guys, the chip but, over here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I need to get to Crow Hill. I can't hear you guys. You're breaking up, man. We need to get to building you a truck. I, I'm, I'm, getting a tossing, truck. I'm tossing around the idea for sure ever since I talked to Eddie. Definitely tossing that around. They're fun, man. They're, you know, I wish a company would come out. I wish Axial would release one or someone like that. You know, come out with a competition style right from the box. Solid right. axle scale truck, you know. Wheelie King, I guess, was about as close as they came, you know. Um, but... 
but yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, we're over an hour, so let's start to wrap oh, yeah. this up here a little bit. Let's uh, kind of go around and uh, uh, Josh didn't get to do his uh, kind of project update, so let's do that real quick. All right. Well, I uh, the scout's done, so that's all. That's all wrapped up. Um, <laughs> let's see. The J the uh, JK G6 truck is well underway. <laughs> the uh, been working on that a bunch. Hopefully, have it pretty well in pretty good shape by the end of this next week or so. What's the plan with that thing? Because I saw you built it, and then I saw you were hacking it up or something. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, I've uh, you can kind of see here in the front. I put a big C notch in the chassis, built oh, some shock yeah. towers. Um, I'm just, it's going to be, at regular ride height, the lower links are going to be about level. So it'll be super low. And then uh, the reason I did, like, the C-notch in the chassis and everything, sorry, I'm out of breath, I just ran upstairs, checked them, <laughs> went outside, checked the mail, see if I, I had some new parts coming in. I was hoping they were going to come in, so I'd show them. But anyway, um, and it, but uh, I want it to be super low but still have all that suspension travel, and I want that travel to be up rather than like trying to run droop or anything like that. So right. it uh, when it bellies out, it should be, <laughs> or when it bottoms out, it should be about an inch off the ground at the at the skid. So it's uh, I'm gonna cut the back off the chassis hopefully tonight and uh, tube that all out. So I've got the. Uh, I'll be right back. No. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I drew that up. At I drew that up in CAD, the, the uh, tubed out rear end, and then I've created all my templates and such. So these are just some of like my regular, uh, it's hard to see. But And then I've got individual oh, yeah. templates for each tube and all that kind of crap, so that's, uh, that'll wrap up that thing. I did, I had mentioned I was building a new computer last time, last week. I did finish that, working on uh, some software and things like that now, and i got to take that over to Fat Jesus's tomorrow. Um, Howard's got my Viterra now, so that's uh, out of here. Uh, Rock Bouncer will be underway as soon as the axles come in. And then, you know, like the Rexo and the Poison Spider Wraith, but that's about it. So um, Yeah, just, just that. Nothing <laughs> yeah. if, I, if, I start a, uh, if I start a drifter, we'll see. You should have seen the look I just got. <laughs> it's not a great totally idea to have her, have her down there while you're doing this, you know. Yeah. Right? Um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, so I've been making some progress. Good stuff. Cool. All right. Well, let's just go Tell around the room and. Uh, I don't know what she's knitting. What are you knitting? Socks. She's knitting socks. I want a hat. <laughs> Howard wants a hat. He needs a hat to keep his head. I would need a hat. She says you do need a hat. <laughs> she says she doesn't have enough yarn. <laughs> It'll take a couple couple spools probably. She can right. knit it out of some chest hair for you. All right. <laughs> Sweet. Hers or yours? Hers. Thanks. Yeah. But uh. If uh, anything else, my uh, Facebook page is Harley Designs. Uh, YouTube, Harley Designs Inc. I've got that December giveaway still going. Um, it should be going well. The got the Wraith chassis and the uh, HD hardware set. Other than that, uh, you can catch me on RC Crawler. I've got some detailed build threads on like that G6 Jeep. Uh, that's it. Howard. Well, I'm going to get that uh, Twin Hammers done so you can give it away, Aaron. Uh, just been working on uh, some battery plates and <laughs> trying to get this drift track going. But other than that, that's about it. You can find me at uh, Howler Custom RC on Facebook. Go ahead, Aaron. Uh, yeah, and I'm uh, on uh, YouTube. It's just Evil Villain RC. Um, hit my Facebook page. It's uh, also Evil Villain RC. <laughs> And uh, I wanted to say thanks to Doug for coming out tonight and hanging out with us. Uh, it was really fun. Yeah, thank you. Uh, anytime, guys. And uh, give everybody uh, uh, the kind of lowdown where they can 
follow your stuff and find out about what you're doing? So um, every Friday on BigSquidRC.com, I do the everybody scaling for the weekend, basically the scale column. Um, you can follow our club, uh, Facebook.com slash ShowMeScalers. Now we're really active on there. And then uh, ShowMeScalers.com. It's, we keep all the events updated there. We have rules, um, and I have some links there. And then anybody interested in the radio control polling, go to fullpullrc.com. That's a, a really great forum that, that started up recently, and we're all of us, you know, nutty pullers are on there with all, all kinds of build threads, and people are selling stuff on there. So, yeah, fullpullrc.com. Very cool. Um, all right, anybody have anything else to add? No, nope, but I think that's uh, it. Go ahead. Josh? Oh, no, I, said, I think that's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, excellent. Well, uh, thanks. Uh, we had more viewers tonight than we've had in a while, so I appreciate everybody who's watching live. Um, uh, appreciate all the people who sent in questions and comments. Uh, and uh, as usual, you can catch us next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Central Standard. And uh, I don't know who our guest is yet, but we'll be sure and post that up on the Facebook page. So jump out there and like RC CarCast on Facebook and uh, stay up to date on what we're doing. So thanks, guys. Thank you. See you guys. Thanks.